there. Welcome to another installment of Rico's Garage. Today, it's time to assemble the 12 valve. If you've been following along on this series, you'll notice I cut out a lot of the teardown, and like I covered in another video, that's just boring stuff that nobody really wants to watch. So, uh, with that being said, if you're new to the channel, thank you. Encourage you to smash that like button and subscribe. We are picking up subscribers slowly but surely. Uh, every video seems to bring more and more of them. So, for those of you that have, thank you. For those of you that haven't, please do so. Uh, there's going to be more content coming. And I hate for you to miss out on it. So, what we're we going to do today? We're going to build this 12 valve. Now, we're not really going to build much to tell you the truth. All we're doing here is freshening it up. There's no machine work involved. We're going to replace the, the wearable items, the bearings, rings, every gasket on it, and oil pump. We're going to reuse the cam. There's nothing wrong with the cam, nothing wrong with the tappets. The crank checked good. All it needs is just a good cleaning. If you are wanting to do more of the higher horsepower stuff, go ahead and subscribe. And keep watching this channel. Uh, you haven't seen it yet, but a friend of mine has a TJ with a 4BT, and we've been talking, it's, uh, he's going to turn the wick up on that, and I think he's going to let us follow along and video it and show it to you. So, with that, we're going to get into, you know, hybrid turbo setup, uh, O-ring in the block, stuff like that. So if, if you're interested in that, it's coming down the pipe. For now, this is just a simple refresh that anybody can do in their shop. That's why I made this channel to show you. Anybody can do it. So uh, let's quit talking and get to work. To lay it out, because sometimes I just get to working and forget to tell you what we're doing. The first thing we're going to do is clean the tappets and put it in because the way that the uh, 12 valve block is, the tappets have to go in from the bottom. So we're going to put those in, then we'll uh, lay down the top half of our main bearing. See if I've got enough ass to pick up that crankshaft and put it in here. I don't know. Gut might get in the way. We'll try it. Uh, we'll put that down in there. We'll go through to torque everything, and uh, then we'll put the camshaft in, and we can rotate the block over. There's a few more steps in between that, but that's the basic rundown. So, for now, first thing I want to do is clean each tappet, shoot it with some brake clean, wipe it off, and put it in there. A couple things to remember when you go to do this. Clean, clean, and then clean some more. I took this thing apart, uh, cleaned all the gasket surfaces the best I could, honed the cylinders, wiped everything off, hauled it over to the coin-op car wash, hosed it down, brought it back, ran out of the rag through it again, blew it off, took some brake clean, cleaned it again, flipped it over, blew all the water out of the bottom half, brake cleaned it, so on and so forth. So clean. And then clean some more, and if you just when you think you got it, go ahead and clean it one more time. Brake clean is your friend. Uh, clean lint-free rags. And just take your time, pay attention. It's not hard to do this. There's just some rules you gotta follow and some things you gotta pay attention to. Other than that, it's just nuts and bolts, people. You're just bolting parts in together. It's, there's no magic voodoo. Those pistons came out of this block as well as did everything else. We're just replacing the consumable parts. So as long as we pay attention, torque when you're supposed to, spend your money on a good torque wrench, don't cheap out. I don't even like borrowing people's torque wrenches because you don't know how they treat them. I spent the money on a snap-on. I, I didn't get the digital. I, I'm kind of old school. I don't trust, want to trust my engine to a battery. I like the old mechanical click type, but still snap-on torque wrench. I back it off every time I put it up. 
it stays in its case and stays away from the rest of my tools. So don't borrow Cousin Eddie's torque wrench that his kids go out and kill flies with it because it's big and heavy. Now, spend your money on the good torque wrench. Borrow the other stuff that's not as critical. So, if you're tired of hearing me talk, let's get to work. Took my tappets out of our box over there that we made when we tore apart the head and everything with the rest of the valve train. Just a quick shot of brake clean, wipe them off, drop them in the way they go. We marked our box front and then laid everything out numerically, so we'll just pick one at a time, brake clean, wipe off, in the block. Don't be afraid to use it. You can't get it too clean. It's also key to note that once you do this, do not flip the engine over on the stand until you have the camshaft in or they'll all fall out on the floor. Then you got a real mess because you don't know where they came from. soaked rag. Hit these main journals one more time. One thing I want to tell you, it, it was preached to me and I can't help but believe it. When you're buying your bearings, you really want to see that right there. I know there's aftermarket companies that make these bearings and there's going to be some of you that say, well, Cummins doesn't make their own parts. True, but whoever Cummins has make their bearings for them, they've got specs. They want them to go by those specs. If they don't go by those specs, they don't use them. They find somebody else to make them. So, the original Cummins bearings went 350,000 miles. That's what's going back in this engine. Because when that truck is on its way to Moab with two buggies on the trailer, I don't want to know cheap parts ruined our trip. Even though these are marked upper and lower, it's not that difficult to figure out. The upper bearings have holes that coincide with the uh, oil holes in the block. Also your thrust side goes next to the last bearing. And then your grooves, locating grooves right there. So we'll put the uppers in. Do not touch this part of the bearing with bare hands. We'll just plop them in there for now. Then we'll do the assembly lube. And then we'll go from there. Hopefully I can do this. <sighs> That's heavy. But we got it. Okay. Back to work. That crankshaft was heavy, and I'm old. <laughs> uh, we'll put the main caps on, laid them out in order over there when we took them apart. Writing goes towards the back, put them in order the way you took them off, put our new bearing insert in here, assembly lube, and I'll show you how to torque them. You forget which way your caps go can also remember that your bearing notches have to line up and go on the same side. Take your time, don't get in a rush. Start everything by hand. 
Don't force anything. If something doesn't go together right, stop. You're doing it wrong. Stop. Walk away from it for a minute. Figure out what you're doing wrong. This is where you leave the four pound hammer in the toolbox this time. And I don't say that very often. Going to get grief from some of you because we haven't got the plastic gauge out to check the bearing clearances. But I look at it this way crankshaft might, might well within spec. We didn't have anything done to it, no machine work. We had good oil pressure. It's going to be fine. Had I had the crank turned and it was going with undersized or oversized bearings, actually, that would have been a different deal. But a standard deal on a factory crankshaft that mics with inspect, plastic gauge is just overkill. Argue if you wish, but that's the way I'm proceeding with it. Final torque on the main bearing cap bolts is 130 foot pounds. Do not do your 130 all in one shot. Sneak up on it. I'm going to go 50, 75, 130. The first two numbers really aren't critical just as long as you sneak up on that final torque. Start from the center out. Go center, over, 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 over. Minimize warping your crankshaft. And just like everything else, just take your time and make sure you do it right. Start out. Wow. Put the engine on wheels. It's a great idea. Do them all at 50. Also important while you're torquing, apply nice, even pressure to get a good torque reading. Stop when you hear the click, obviously. Just nice, easy pull. Okay. Now we'll go to 75. Okay, final torque, 130. Brake clean on my towel. Wipe off the bolt heads. I'm going to take a yellow paint pen and dab every one I torque. Some of you may say it's an extra step that's not necessary. That way I know they've all been torqued. So, here we go for the 130. There we go, torqued. Now we'll whirl it over just to check and see how everything feels. I think we'll live with that. Do a timing cover, oil pump, camshaft. While we're at this stage of the build, we'll go ahead and address our killer dowel pin. Those of you that are not familiar, this dowel pin right here is the Achilles heel of a 12 valve Cummins. This pin will rattle out over time, and when it does, it falls into the cam gear that's not here right now but this pin falls and wedges in between the cam gear and the crank gear busts this cover wrecks all kinds of stuff if you've got more money than you know what to do with you can buy a kit that is a fancy tab that goes over comes with a bolt goes right here holds this pin into place if you're like the rest of us you just take a 5 16 fender washer Carve it out into the right shape, get a longer bolt, and that will hold that pin in place. 
quick. 18 foot pounds. Our oil pump is next. Make sure you pre-lube it. Okay, oil pump installed. 18 foot pounds on those as well. Bearings are lubed. Next thing we're going to work on is putting our main seal housing on. Now, there's some things you want to pay attention to. These engines, they leak oil. There's procedures you can follow when putting this housing on that will kind of prolong the inevitable, if you will. First off, with our gasket, we took some high tack and put it on the part itself. Then put the paper gasket on, and I just put a light skin coat RTV on there. Put our Cummins rear main seal in here with the insulation tool. Leave the plastic guide ring on there. Then you push it on the crank. Crank shaft, we took some memory cloth, shined up the surface. Didn't quite pop on there in one shot, but we got it. These little itty bitty bolts with the 8 millimeter heads. It's all that holds this housing onto the engine block. And a lot of times these engines will leak from what looks like the rear main. But in fact, it's these bolts that back out of this housing right here. The problem is, either way, it's still labor intensive to, to fix it. The rear main's not bad, but it's still the same amount of labor to fix it. What you can do, first of all, we're going to put blue Loctite on every bolt you put in here. And there is actually a torque spec here, 80 inch pounds. So, my clicker type inch pound torque range does go down that low, but I do have a dial type that I use to measure pinion preload on differentials. I'm going to use that, make sure the torque evenly with the Loctite. to install the rings onto our piston. We have our piston clamped into a vise here. Uh, we're using the genuine Cummins rings. Once again, they're really not that expensive. 
expensive, especially if you shop around like anything else. If you go to a dealership, you're going to pay top tier pricing, but if you do some looking around, you can find a good deal on them. Why wouldn't you want to go with them? Uh, just a few things I want to touch on before we get started on this. Some of you have never built an engine before, maybe watching it for that purpose, so I'll walk you through, show you how some things go, and then we'll, we'll put a piston together, and then we'll go over and put it into the block. Three different rings in our kit. The one, the thicker one with the spring inside of it is your oil ring, that goes on the bottom groove. We have a darker colored ring how well you can see it, but it has a, a chamfer on it. That is our second ring, middle ring. And then we have the shinier ring, the uh, kind of a wedge-shaped key slot. If you can't see that, I apologize. The rings are marked. They have a dot on them, as well as they actually say top on them. So you have to be either a litter or a moron to miss that. Second ring, same way, dot, top, oil ring, you can go on either way, it doesn't matter. If we go to put them on the piston, you notice the rings have a gap. The oil, the oil ring spacer also has a gap. We're going to want those 180 degrees from each other. What you want to do is put your gaps on in line with the pin of the piston, not on the sides. You also want to alternate so that you don't get compression loss to the gaps. So we'll install this ring on this side, the second ring directly across, top ring directly across. And you say why well, you know why does it have to be on the pin side? I'll explain that to you. This piston when it is in the cylinder will actually rock. And the motion I'm doing is exaggerated. It doesn't move that much, but it will actually rock in the cylinder as it's going up and down. The crankshaft moves the connecting rod. It rocks if you have if you have your ring gaps out here. The edges of this ring will actually bite into the cylinder wall, and this piston will be cocked enough that it will force, and over time, will cut a groove in the cylinder. Since it rocks on the pin itself, gaps on the pin side, you'll be fine. You won't have an issue. The special tool you're going to want is these ring insulation pliers. I've seen guys, and I've actually done it, put rings on by hand. These things will break like glass, and there's, when you're putting them on, it's just enough or too much, and it breaks. There's no in between. So. Enough talking, Rico. Let's put it together. Find where your oil ring pulls apart. See, it actually. No need to take it all the way apart. Seat's good. You're set. Gap is on this side. Take our second ring. 
sure we have our dock, make sure it's the top. Put our second ring on. Take your time, nice and easy. Smoke, have your cigarette before you do this so you're nice and relaxed. Get stressed out and walk away from it. And you're going to be very stressed once you break the ring. Those are installed. Take us a bucket of clean 1540. Just let our piston swim in there for a while. We'll take our connecting rods. Do not touch the surface. You'll notice, I don't know if you agree that or not, they are marked upper and lower. Upper being the top, upper being the rod end, lower being the uh, yeah. So take an upper, line up the groove, push it into place. Grab another bearing. Take a rod cap, set it in place. You better do so. These rod caps have numbers on them as well as the rod does. Numbers need to correspond to each other. Thread those in just enough. That cap going anywhere. Rod bolt torque. Again, three stages. Doesn't really matter how you get there as long as you end up at 75. Myself, I like to turn the engine over. One complete revolution, grease piston, make sure nothing's hanging up, but if something does, you'll know which holds the problem. Now, I've only got to do that five more times, and I hope the next one feels smoother. The ring compressor's kind of a piece of shit.
28 minutes left on the battery. It's getting late. I don't know how much longer I'm going to work on this, but I got all the pistons in and I want to kind of give you some of the highlights because I just kind of worked and let the camera do this thing. But there you can see where the pistons mark front, like I was telling you. Everything's all in. Clean. If you go to do this, I'll warn you right now. That style ring compressor is a piece of shit. I'm pretty sure that came in some tools that my grandpa gave me a long ass time ago. And it's better off to be held on to for sentimental value. Next inch of build, getting one of those tapered ring compressors for sure. Uh, dipping the piston in the bucket of oil makes a hell of a mess. But we're not going to have to worry about a dry start. So it's going to be a little oily when we go to fire it, but at least it won't be dry. So. Um, you be the judge, whatever your opinion, but this is the way I do it, and that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. These ring expanders, like I was telling you about, will save your life. We made it through without breaking any rings. The block is pretty much complete. I think while the camera's charging, I'm going to go ahead and throw the frost plugs in. You don't need a video on that if you do, you're watching the wrong channel. Go ahead and I'll throw the uh, the oil cooler on. Not much to know about that. The uh, front cover I'm not going to do just yet because our injection pump bolts on here. And I'm going to play with the timing a little bit. I'll show that to you in another video. It'll probably be a video all by itself. Water pump I'll probably go ahead and throw on. And... Or... We're well, ready for an oil pan too. It's the end for tonight, and for you, you'll come back and see what we got done while I put the camera to bed.